In today's Elden Ring video, we're gonna take a look at some of the biggest mistakes that you could be doing right now. I was guilty of some of them quite early on and kind of wish somebody was there to tell me to avoid these and also some headaches in the process. Be it if you want to like make your character stronger, become better at the game or just have a better progression and a better time in Elden Ring, we're gonna cover all of that in today's video. Now being too cocky early on was one of the biggest mistakes that I was guilty of, trying to go to Godric for example right away, thinking I could just skill my way out of it. Well, proves that I'm not that skillful at the game at the end of the day, but the game will heavily punish you if you take too long to kill bosses or if you need that extra inch of mana or extra flask of HP before they defeat you. And instead, what you should do is to focus on building up your character first. Go ahead and do some of the easier open world and dungeon encounters that are quite plentiful even in the starting areas. Also go ahead and get more runes in the process to boost up your stats and level up your character. I've covered that in yesterday's video, so you can definitely go ahead and check that out too. Now, if you get one shot by enemies, also invest some points into Vigor or Endurance so that you can either tank that damage or at least dodge away. My main rule is to get at least 10 to 15 levels before going to the first main boss and also get everything ready to reduce my chances of like just repeating that fight way too many times. Obviously, if you're the type of player who can one shot any boss in the game naked while playing a banjo, obviously just go ahead and do it like that but like for 99% of the people it's probably not gonna be the case. Now if you still have trouble with these bosses you can summon really powerful allies for that specific fight if you talk to these like special characters right before heading in the boss room. For example in the case of Margit you can find a golden summon right here onto the right side of the room for Rogier, which is a mage that can help you against the fight. And the same goes for the Godric boss fight and pretty much most of the boss fights right there for the main ones. Similarly at the same Stormveil Caster, another example early on in the courtyard leading to the boss fight you will find a Fally Lux over here, a really strong warrior and of course after a brief discussion you can also summon her at the boss entrance and she is going to be of immense help. In all of these situations these allies are very useful and quite powerful but of course you still have to be careful to not let them die. I'm not exactly sure what happens if they die they never have done on me at the very least but these are characters you can then talk to and they even give you like rewards at the round table so you might still want to like pull your weight in these boss fights. Which brings us to number two and and that's the fact that you should not skip on the jellyfish summons. On your way towards the Stormveil castle, you will find a shack with a Roderica inside of it. Well, if you just go through her dialogues about three times, eventually she will give you this seemingly innocent looking summon of a jellyfish. And one of the biggest mistakes I was guilty of early on was to completely dismiss this right away because while well, jellyfish are generally weak enemies and on the opposite side, we also had the wolves that until recently were my favorite. Well, it turns out that it's the other way around and the jellyfish is way stronger than I initially anticipated. It's probably not gonna do a lot more damage or stagger than the wolves, but it has other way bigger advantages. One of them is the fact that it's much larger HP pool than the wolves means that it's going to survive for way longer in fights, which is exactly what you need from these spirits that you use to like distract the boss in the first place anyway. Second of all, it also has a long range attack meaning that it can pull aggro pretty much from the other side of the room or pretty much the area. And finally, it floats over the ground instead of being on the ground level, making it sometimes completely bypass or at least mitigate AoE spell attacks. Like for example, in the boss fight against the dragon, this creature resisted so many hits, especially from the flame attacks, that it completely distracted the boss for the entire duration of the fight, so it was pretty much an easy target that I could pick off right away. Anyway, on a related note, this brings us to number 3 and you can actually buff your summons to make them way more powerful and you can do so back at the round table by simply speaking to Rodrika once more but there are a few prerequisites. The first one is you have to finish the fight with Margit so that he is defeated and Rodrika can make her way to the round table. After that you have to go ahead and speak with her right here next to the round table and make sure you exhaust all of her dialogue options. Once that's done, head over to the hallway and speak with the blacksmith right here and choose the dialogue option about Roderica. And kinda have to go like between these two NPCs a couple of times, just make sure you kinda exhaust all of these options for both of them and once you're done with that, simply teleport back to the round table and now she's going to like give you the option to upgrade the spirit.
favorite. And yes, it's going to require some special items and some runes, but you can make them way more powerful and you will eventually get these as you progress through the game anyway. But moving on to number 4, let's talk about another big mistake that you might be guilty of right now, which is not being aggressive enough. It's important to be cautious on your first playthrough until you get used to the combat and the enemy attacks, but being more aggressive is just as important as being defensive in Elden Ring. Many encounters in Elden Ring are designed in a way you simply cannot dodge or block your way out of them and doing so means you will be losing that fight. Instead, for any enemy that's highly aggressive and constantly overwhelms you with attacks, that's their actual weakness. Which is why in these situations I recommend you to step in on the counter attack and be as close as possible to the enemy. Oftentimes you will notice that their attacks will completely bypass you simply because you're quote unquote hugging them. And even if it comes at the cost of trading a few blows here and there which is unavoidable, you should not be deterred from playing aggressively during these moments. Similarly, I fully recommend the jump power attack when especially playing a melee class. If you're unsure what the enemy is about to do next, a jumping power attack will almost never fail you. It's an amazing damage dealer, it's very fast even with heavy weapons and it can lead up to stagger break opening up enemies to critical hits. Similarly there's a couple other tips that I have for a few more enemies, for example for the spear wielders you can pretty much wait their charge attack and then slightly move to the right side and circle them back to reach their exposed backs and pretty much do a critical strike over there which is like super easy to pull off against them. For bosses which have one handed attacks just pay attention which like arm they use and hold onto the side opposite of where that weapon is. Like for example in this case if the enemy is using their right hand to attack you I usually stay to their left foot so that I can pretty much hug it and avoid most of that damage. It's something that I pretty much picked up from the previous Souls games. This brings us to number 5 and speaking of weapons and special moves let's talk about a big mistake that you might be doing right now regarding them and that's adding an Ash of War to a weapon which in the process could remove a more powerful default ability that that weapon might have. For example, the Uchigatana that the Samurai class starts with at the beginning of the game has the unsheathed skill by default, which should never be replaced. If you put anything like a National of War on that weapon, that's gonna be gone and you're essentially losing a really powerful attack early on. And there's very few things in the game that should warrant you replacing that unsheathed attack, especially for something like the Uchigatana. Katana. Another thing to note is depending on the class and the build, there are multiple types of Ashes of War in the game that you might want to apply to your weapon in the detriment of others. Basically, there are different categories depending on the stat that they scale with and the provided effects. So some of the basic Ashes of Wars are the Standard, Keen, Quality and Heavy. Standard follows the weapon's original scaling so it doesn't really change anything. Keen increases dexterity scaling but decreases strength and base weapon damage. Quality is more balanced approach for strength and dexterity and finally heavy skill strength but decreases the other stats especially that dexterity so depending on the class depending which stat you focus on you will want to pick that one or the other at the same time there's also special variations like the magic and the cold ashes of war which provide you with intelligence scaling and also add a magic effect and there's plenty more like for example lightning adds shock damage but also increases dexterity fire adds the fire effect but reduces scaling so you kind of have to be careful and look exactly what stats decrease, what increase and what effect you're getting on top of that and that's how you build your character. Which also brings us to number 6, let's talk a bit about mounted combat and weapon wielding tips. Especially for the mount, you don't just get to attack on the right side, you can also attack to the left side. On the controller it's the easiest, you can also use L1 and R1 and you can attack to the other side of the mount in case you're like not noticing this. I didn't until recently and I feel like a complete fool. Another one is for switching weapons to two-handed or mixing out weapons, an even more important tip because some weapons have special abilities only when being dual wielded. The easiest way to do this on the controller is to just hold triangle and then press either R1 or L1 depending which weapon you want to dual wield, assuming that you have like two weapons in each of the slots. Moving on to number 7, if you're playing with a spellcaster
faster and you're feeling restricted by the spell slots, you can actually expand upon these with some upgrades called Memory Stones. The earliest you can find is going to be located east side of the Weeping Peninsula, right here at this Rise Tower on the map. You have to first break the seal to make your way inside of the tower, which is going to be done super easily. Just interact with the statue at the bottom of the stairs, which will give you a clue, and that is to slay three spirit turtles. The first two will be located right by the stairs, one in front of them and the other one hiding on the side in the vegetation. And finally, the third one will be located in the middle of this lake right next to the tower, likely invisible, so you will have to go straight into the middle and use a melee attack. Once it's done, you can head your way to the tower, all the way to the top floor, and inside of it you're going to find the chest that gives you the memory stone, which immediately unlocks an extra spell slot, and there's gonna be quite a few more in the game. And this, ladies and gents, brings us to the final point on the list, and that's gonna be about the divine power. Once you defeat Godric and some of the other main bosses in the game, you're gonna get great runes from them, which boost up stats or give you other bonuses, and also boss remembrances. Now, similar to Dark Souls 3, you're gonna have these runes at first losing their power after defeating the bosses, but you need to restore them. So once you have defeated Godric, what you want to do is to head over to the main courtyard back at the Stormvale Castle. And in this specific area with the annoying ranged enemies, you're gonna wanna like just pass them real quick and then head over to the right side building right here while also passing the lion mini boss. Or you can take it down, but I suggest passing it for now. Here you will want to make your way over the bridge all the way up into the back side and then use the teleporter which will bring you to the tower. Once there, make your way to the top and here is where you will pretty much be able to remake the great runes, especially the one for Godric. And by the way, this seems to increase all of your stats or at the very least that's what it says according to its description. Once that's done, also make sure you head back to the round table because once you defeated Roderick, you're going to notice a new room has opened. This one right here with the two fingers behind it and of course the witch sitting on the side. Talking to this character will give you the possibility to use that boss remembrance to acquire one of the multiple weapon choices right here, which is going to be for any boss you defeat in the game, of course in terms of main bosses. And you can choose either one or the other, one of them also costs some extra room but obviously you can only pick one of them since you only have one remembrance so this implies you're gonna have to run a second playthrough and maybe pick something else next time for a different character this is it pretty much with the biggest mistakes that I was guilty of totally let me know down below if there's any others that you were guilty of and corrected and I'll see you guys in the next video